Hi, I'm Don Rittner. And I'm Justina Kostek. And we're still exploring the village of Sharon Springs, New York, along the Great Western Turnpike. Sharon Springs has been a home to many talented people in literature and entertainment over the years. So today we're going to talk to two people originally from the West Coast, but now call Sharon Springs home. So join us as we continue exploring history, history on, on the, the road. road. People and places remain in her mind, but you can't go back to a church that burned down a lifetime ago. Dying corsets in a chilly pot. Hear that song? Yeah, what is it? What does it sound like? Peggy Lee? Sounds like Peggy Lee, doesn't it? But it isn't. That's Veronica Claus. She's the famous San Francisco jazz singer. And for the last 30 years, she was performing all along the West Coast. But I heard she recently moved to Sharon Springs. She's living in Sharon Springs now? That's what I heard. I love her voice. I do too. I think we should uh, pay a visit. Let's go see her. Okay. Veronica, so I guess the first question would be, why Sharon Springs? I mean, for 30 years you were this well-known San Francisco jazz singer, and, uh, and then you come to the East Coast, and of all places, and we love Sharon Springs, <laughs> but it's like, that's quite a difference. Really, it, it came down to this building. The church. Uh, the church. I call, it, church. I call it the Lyric House. Mm. And uh, it really came down to this, this building. I kind of fell in love with it. You know, I was in San Francisco uh, for 30 years, and it was wonderful. Um, but you know, the city had, for me, sort of run its course. There was not much yeah. left for me to do there. It it changed a lot, and it just wasn't the city I fell in love with anymore. And uh, you know, it was time to time to go and I thought where would I like to be um, and I always wished that I had moved to New York City when I was 25 or 30 right. and uh, <laughs> but I didn't because I was having so much fun in San Francisco huh. and so all my friends from the city had moved up north so uh, I had a friend here in the area that I had come to visit and I knew it was beautiful and uh, I came and I saw this Place and I fell in love with it. What made you fall in love with the building other than, you know, the fact that it's wonderful and historical? Uh, well, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I, uh, um, I taught myself to play the piano by going to our church. Oh. Uh, in the evenings when no one was there, I would turn on one light and sit at the piano and teach myself. And, really? And it was really, uh, was more meditation than anything. It really was a sanctuary for me. Um, it had very little to do with the religion, yes. but the space and the, that, that sort of uh, opportunity to be yourself and have a space yes. that was mine for a moment, you know? And uh, I just, I love it. I feel, it feels so much like home Yes. in this church. Yes. So, um, yeah. That's yes. why I'm. That's why I'm here. Yes. And I, I grew up in Illinois, in a small town. Mm -hmm. So coming back to Sharon Springs, coming to Sharon Springs, felt like going back home. Oh, right, right. You know. So it's because I'm thinking 30 years ago, 40 years ago. You know, the 60s. You, San Francisco was, you know, almost the home of psychedelic rock. Jefferson yeah, Airplane. Well, it was There's such a, a lot going bed, on. You know, in the early 90s and and through the 2000 and you know, it was such a hotbed for creative artists and yeah. and musicians and you know I could I played very often and regularly at places like Enrico's and North Beach 
uh, and uh, uh, a club called uh, Café du Nord, which I love. We played there all the time. And, you know, and over the years, places kind of dropped away and closed, and now it's just, uh, it's hard to find those places that are right, you know, for, yeah. it was hard for me. Now you think of it, that area as more like Silicon Valley technology rather than music and exactly. culture. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's changed a lot. I, you know, I like to go back to visit and visit friends, and but uh, I don't. I'm I'm fine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I had yeah, it's why jazz? Stay. But why jazz? I mean, considering at that time it would have been more rock and roll going on. Um, you know, I I, I did uh, at early on in the early '90s. I formed a 12-piece band, with wow. backup singers and a horn section mm. and the whole, like, you know, and it was fantastic. Yes. We did some great stuff. Uh, but after a while, it was, it was difficult because, you know, especially playing venues with questionable sound, yes. you know, it was always like <laughs> you always have to over-sing to hear yourself with the band and you're always losing your voice and mm. you know you felt like it was a train behind you and all you were doing <laughs> was trying to hold on you know right. and mm. as great as that was um you know i just felt like it was time to kind of take back the the control and have a little more intimate sound a little more uh focus Yes. You know, as opposed to the spectacle of 12 pieces and the power of 12 right. pieces. Right. Is it 40s and 50s was your favorite or was uh, it earlier? Yeah, I, you know, I like a little bit of everything from okay. 20s to 70s, but uh, uh, yeah, 40s and 50s yeah. probably. 30s, 40s, 50s, yeah. It would be, because uh, I, when I listen to you, I can think of, I only think of Peggy. <laughs> Well, I, I do, I love Peggy Lee, yeah. um, but I kind of was a late comer to Peggy Lee, yeah. uh, even though I've done a CD of uh, yeah, right. tribute to her, yeah. her music. Um, but, you know, early on, I, uh, it took me a while in the same way that I was yes. originally had a 12-piece band and was into all the like real powerful stuff you know, her voice, and I needed to kind of settle down right. in order to yeah. come to appreciate her her subtlety yes. and her control and her, you know, the 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 way she makes time stand still. Yes. Do you, you have know? a favorite singer from that time? Mm. Uh, gosh, you know, I love a lot of them. I love uh, Jimmy Scott. Mm. I love Helen Merrill. I love oh, Anita yeah. O'Day in that period. Yes. Uh, Dinah Washington. Yes. Etta Jones. Yes. <laughs> so many, so many. Yes. When yeah. was the last time you performed? Uh, well, I did a, a streaming concert here in, San, in Sharon Springs. I almost said here in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, here in Sharon Springs. Uh, um, when was that? Just about a month ago. Really? Um, with uh, Lance Horn from New York. Wow. And uh, Eleanor Norton from New York also, cello, Fabulous. cellist. And uh, we streamed that on my website and it was really great. Um, and then before that, I did a show in San Francisco just before COVID hit. Right. Uh, in February. Great. Near Valentine's Day. So the technology in a way, you know, even though I have some complaints about it, um, <laughs> In this case, you can still be yeah, here, yeah, in you know, state New York. That was part of the and, whole... And stream it all over the world, mm -hmm. so people around the world can still hear it. Yeah, that was sort of part of the whole thing, was like, okay, how can we do this and make it work? And, you know, for the future, too, how can we uh, make it work from where I'm at now? So are, how, are you still recording your own music? I mean, have um, you, have, I, do you do your own music or you just do other? Uh, uh, I write a bit. Own? I write a bit. I have a few songs. That I, I, yeah. My first CD in 1997 was almost all original stuff. Great. Um, and I, you know, I have just have found, and I've recorded a few, or written a 
few original things since then, but I have just found it. It, it, I think it took me so long to for those songs on that first album in 97 to come to fruition yeah. that, uh, you know, maybe someday it'll happen again. Yes. But yeah, I... Yeah, worrying it's not as easy as it looks, is it? Well, I think what it is is that I find so many songs that speak to me. Yes. And that really do feel like they're mine, you know? Yes. And, and really speak to me in a way that I am really happy doing them. <laughs> well, and that's a genre where you can add your own. Yeah, you like can interpret them. You can yeah. interpret them in a similar way, or you can do something completely different. So, you know, that's, I can't think it's been uh, uh, so much fun to reinterpret things that I, I just uh, yeah. have been satisfied. <laughs> so, it looks like Sharon Springs is sort of this magnet because uh, it's drawing all these sort of unique, you know, creative people. So you're here, there's a, a, a Pulitzer Prize winning poet living here now, yeah. his wife wrote a book that's been turning yes. into a miniseries on HBO. I've heard it's really good, I want yeah, to read it. Yeah, and, and, and again, if you drive through Sharon Springs, you know, it's it's a small community and, mm -hmm. you know, from the sort of look at it, you would say, no, not much going on there. Right. And yet you see all this this creative juice here. Yeah. Well, I, th I think it's probably that way in a lot of right. small towns, rural places. Mm -hmm. Do it doesn't seem like much going on, but if you, you know, if you're there for a period of time, you can find the people who are doing creative things. But you're right. There is a lot going on right around here. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't. I don't know why that is, but I meet so many people and the longer I'm here, I've only been here for three, a little over three years, and the more I'm here, the more people I meet. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself like in the next couple of years here? I mean, do you have any plans on... <laughs> well, mostly... Besides I'm, surviving? Mostly yeah. I'm trying to get this place... Uh, yes. ...progress with this place. I'm. Uh, it, you know, as a church, it had no, really nothing, yeah, yeah. no, no water, no uh, plumbing, no, you know, they didn't yeah, do, no they didn't, they didn't do uh, services here in the winter. So, yes. you know, all of that stuff is uh, in in progress. Yes. So. Have you ever done any film work? Uh, I have done a few things. Uh, <laughs> um, I was a. Uh, have a spot in a film called the, uh, the Stranger in Us. Uh huh. Another film that was called The Elk Hotel, which oh. is a really uh, fascinating, low budget. It's I think there's episodes of it on YouTube. Really? I think they used to be there. I don't know. But anyway, my favorite part was where I ha I was supposed to be psychic. Yes. And I went into trances, and in the middle of the night, I was in a trance, and I was I woke up and did this Native American elk dance, which wow. was supposed to have a choreographer. Yeah. Uh, but on the day of the shoot, they <laughs> said that the choreographer had flaked, so improvise. Oh. oh. <laughs> what did you so, do? I improvised. You improvised. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Watch some movies. You've yeah. seen some yes. uh, bad B films with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you just make it work. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so only a live performer could do that. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So are you going? Are you going to sing anytime soon? Or are you going to do any more? Uh, I, I don't know for sure. Um, I would imagine the next thing will be another streaming show. Right. Um, yeah, uh, the one the one is still up on my website. Okay. Um, and I hope to be doing some more streaming stuff okay. soon. And people could still find your music yes. online now. So yes, oh still, yeah. So they can still buy your CDs. Yeah, absolutely. There's CDs. There's uh, two CDs with uh, the Tammy Hall Trio uh, Quartet, which are fantastic from 2012 and 2013, or 14. Yeah. Great. 
So. Yes. Well, thanks for spending some time for us. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you for coming to the Lyric House. Yeah, and we will be listening to your music. Yes. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you. <laughs> so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sharon Springs was famous for its mineral baths and also was a summer home for two beer-making tycoons, New York's Henry Clausen and Max Schaefer. During the 1970s, Schaefer was a top-selling beer in the U.S. Henry Clausen Jr. built a summer house here and produced more beer annually than his closest rival, Anheuser-Busch. The Clausen Farm was purchased in 2010 by Yvonne Gardner, who is turning the area into an overnight destination as well as a performing arts center. Let's make a visit. Here we are, 150 miles from New York City, with this gorgeous view of the Mohawk Valley, and yet this place has a real connection to New York City, and especially beer. Yes, it Is does. Is that correct? Could you tell us the history? Yes. Um, so this was um, the summer estate of Henry Clausen, who was a, the ninth largest brewer in the United States at that time. He actually brewed more beer than Anheuser-Busch, uh, 90 barrels a year. So they had a huge uh, brewery down in New York City. And when summer would come, many of the brewery families would come up from New York City. And this particular building that we're sitting on the porch right now, this was used as a, basically a playhouse. It's called a casino, which is not like Las Vegas casino, right. but more like they played cards, uh, bowling, uh, they had uh, pummel horse, they boxing. And so all the men would stay in this building, and then the women would stay in the manor house because this was deemed too risque and too rowdy for decent women to, to be in. Can you tell us more about Clausen himself? Or? He made a really interesting beer, uh, not unusual at the time, but unusual nowadays, a Bach beer. Bach beer is a beer that needs to be lagered for six months. So it's a very uh, interesting beer. It's a German beer, German style beer. The Clausens were Germans. So that was one of the beers that was brewed. And there was also another beer, uh, a champagne lager beer, which was brewed in the style that you would make champagne. Yeah, so it's pretty. So it was like bubble. Uh, like a little bit more effervescent. So I have coupled with a local brewery here, brewery maker here in uh, Cherry Valley, and we're bringing back those beers. Oh, Two years ago, so cool. yeah, we brought back the Bach beer, and we're uh, wanting to go ahead and bring back the Champagne Lager. So, mm -hmm. is, so you're gonna sell it in the stores, or how are you gonna do? Uh, yeah, we, so you go. So it's like a 150 year old beer in some ways, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Ivan, what brought you to Sharon Springs? Ha! Huh. <laughs> a lot of people ask me that because I was uh, living in California. And I watched a TV sh a reality show called The Fabulous Beekman Boys. And when I watched that show and I saw Brent and Josh, who are the main characters in the reality show, I really loved the way that they were living their lives. And I just thought, well, I was going to New York City to watch the U.S. Open, the tennis tournament. I thought, well, I'll jump on a train and I'll go to Sharon Springs and just look around. And as soon as I came into not only the village of Sharon Springs, everybody was so friendly and welcoming. But when I walked on this property, it was as if a, a, a bolt of energy just hit me so strongly that there was no question that I, that I wanted to own this property and love it and develop it and renovate it and see it have its life again and have its uh, glory days. So that's what I'm in the process of doing. So what are you going to do with it? I mean, it's a big property, and what's, what's your plans? Well, it's a farm, and what we like to say is we're, we're growing art here. So anything that has to do with art, whether it be music, whether it's uh, paintings, whether it's plays, uh, that's what's really happening. It's sort of morphed into its own life in that way. 
we've had a couple events, live streaming events, and we're going to just continue on with that. Um, didn't you have a concert here recently? Yes, I did. Yes, a beautiful concert with Veronica Klaus, and uh, she had a couple of her friends come out from New York City, uh, Lance and Eleanor, uh, Lance's piano keyboard, and Eleanor was on the cello and had a beautiful concert that we live stream and we're planning on doing another one uh, come late fall here so we just want to continue on with that right. well, a lot of a lot of people especially artists they they talk about the energy around sharon springs mm -hmm. so can you tell us is, is that something that you feel too is this something that you okay how, how do i ask this question well yeah no it's like it <laughs> There's something about this that yeah, attracts there's something, people. There's something about Sharon Springs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I should ask again. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's okay. something about Sharon Springs that attracts a lot of people. Mm -hmm. and, and you said yourself that you felt an amazing energy when you yes. entered this property. Yes. And they've actually discovered that Sharon Springs is a vortex the way in which the vortex in Sedona. So there is, the energy is interesting here. It can go really positive <laughs> or it can go a little negative. So we find ourselves, at least I find myself, always wanting to keep myself in check energetically because it is very powerful. It is very powerful uh, force. And people that come here are people who have had success in their life and now they've maybe discovered that there has to be something else. Yeah. So for such a small town, we have very well accomplished people, many in the arts and they find uh, Sharon Springs to be a place where they can feel this really intense sense of community. We're all very interested in making sure that the village thrives again. And we have that common goal and uh, there's a really sweet connectedness we all have. Yeah, and it seems from people we've been talking to, a lot of things are centering on the spa, if the spas get you know, brought back to life. Mm -hmm. And we've talked to, I mean, Pulitzer Prize winning poets. I mean. You know, Veronica, who was a, a pretty famous San Francisco jazz singer. Yes. So you're right, it, it sort of attracts, whatever it is about the area, mm -hmm. seems to attract all these creative people. It does, yeah. And continues mm -hmm. to you know, attract creative people. Mm -hmm. So where do you think Sharon Springs is going to be, say, five years from now? Oh, I, I imagine it being thriving and the main street bustling with People going to the spa, people enjoying the fine restaurants we have down there, and shopping, and I think it's uh, no doubt in my mind that it's going to be hugely successful and keep its sweetness and its quaintness and its quirkiness. You know, everybody's just a little bit uh, yeah. you want to side, unique, <laughs> what you say? Right. Yeah. Unique, that's a good, good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you said this is a sort of a unique place, mm -hmm. and uh, can we get a tour? Oh yeah, I'd love to show you. Okay, yeah. let's do that. Let's, okay, let's see let's what's do in it. there. Yay! <laughs> so Yvonne, this is like really cool. But you said there's some history associated with this. Yes, it just happens that this is the oldest one-lane bowling alley in all the United States. Oh my God. When was this building? Uh, this was started this building in 1890 and completed in 1892. So at that time, uh, if you were wealthy, every home had to have a bowling alley. Really? Yes. I wonder why. It was just, just, a, just entertainment, I guess. Entertainment. You know? Somebody was trying to prove something. Yeah. <laughs> well, in Germany, at, at, this would be called a Kegelbahn. The uh, bowling alley like this, so they had them in Germany. So uh, maybe that was oh, inspired, Henry, you know, yeah, right. Henry. To and he was German, right? So exactly, yeah. Yeah, like you know, bring something from home. Right. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Can we we can try that, right? Oh yeah. Just strike. As you can tell from the sound, the acoustics, because of this floor-to-ceiling wainscoting, is Beautiful incredible. Beautiful acoustics, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So a good friend you of ours... Singing here. Yeah. The sound is beautiful. A good friend of ours, who's a well-known singer, came in and right away she just went into a 
how about Whitney Houston sounds? So, <laughs> it just sounds so beautiful. So what we've been doing in here now is a lot of uh, live streaming and uh, with different artists coming in and, and poets, and but mainly jazz singers. And, is this where Veronica Claus did her thing? Yes, it is, oh. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But what was this originally? I originally mean, this was uh, the gym. Oh, this was the gym? Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that where the boxing bags used to hang from? Yes, exactly. Oh. Whoa. And they would have the rings. You know, oh, the right, gym, so yeah, the, the gymnastic, gymnastic rings. Yes. And a gotta keep in, you know, you gotta keep in shape if you're gonna drink all that beer. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. There's bo boxing gloves. Boxing there, gloves, right? yeah, there was boxing. And, and what's that for uh, spectators up there? Or? Well, that's uh, the uh, balcony that comes off the second floor. Uh -huh. And it's interesting because that balcony in the center, you can actually remove that railing. And that was the way in which they brought the trunks up when guests would come. Oh, so there yeah. was a pulley system up here that would transverse across and you would bring the trunks up. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So there's no elevator here. No. Yeah. Can we see the upstairs? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. That probably has a lot to do with acoustics too. Yeah. Hello? What am I to do? I can't help it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know, Dietrich and her <laughs> low register doesn't really carry that much. <laughs> she was more of a speaking kind of, a, she you is. know, not singing. That's right. Yeah, you yeah, know, charismatic. She was groovy. So this is where they used to sleep, or this was one of the rooms. One of the rooms. Yeah, it's pretty big for a bedroom. Yeah, right. but the women didn't sleep here. No, men slept at home. <laughs> Maybe with. Yeah, I've got a few friends. <laughs> you can actually see the Adler from here. Oh, yeah? Oh, cool. You can see the top of it, yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, you're looking, you're exactly north, and you're looking at the Adirondacks and the Green Mountains, and keep going on. So that's, we're probably looking at what, uh, 50 miles, 100 miles? People say 90 miles. Yeah, yeah 90, on a clear day, you can see 90 miles from up here. Yeah, it really makes sense, it doesn't it? It's everywhere in Sharon Springs, there's always like a view. Mm hmm. It really is something. And you never get tired of it. It's always changing, it's always beautiful when the storms roll in and you're sitting on that porch. Oh boy. <laughs> I remember when we had the hurricane. This is where I was. I came oh, up here. <laughs> so, yeah, when, uh, what was that? Sandy came in. I was up on the turret watching it come in. Yeah. Yeah. I love storms. I love I do too. I love lightning. Yeah. We were enjoying the view with Yvonne, but it was time to go visit the Mineral Springs. After all, that's what Sharon Springs was famous for. Veronica and Ivan are just two another examples of extraordinary people who moved to Sharon Springs. Agreed. So we'll see you next time as we learn more about history, history on, on the, the road. road.